The reason you clicked this video is because you're tired of having bad credit and you're tired of being denied. You believe you deserve it all, and I know you deserve it all. The reason why you should listen to me is because I've been helping people knock the credit bills out just like this. So if you're a full believer of you reap what you sow, hey, go grab a pen, go get some paper, and hit the like button, because we about to get straight into it. Hey, it's time to, you already know, knock the credit bills out. So this is your first step to actually fixing your credit, all right? You reap what you sow. So, hey, we're going to sow good seeds so we can reap good benefits. So first things first, how to get started, what you need to do first um, to start fixing your credit. So we got to do this in the first 24 hours. So the first thing you want to do is get your report from Identity IQ, all right? You want to grab your credit report from Identity IQ because it provides you a lot of information to actually fix your credit. And what I'm going to do is show you what I'm talking about because it breaks down what you need to do. And you're going to see inconsistent information and based off of the law, right? We do everything based off of the law. So if you go to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which is 15 USC 1681, everything has to be complete and accurate, all right? So what I want to do is show you the inconsistent um, things on your credit report that will allow you to get it removed from your credit report. But most importantly, if you ever wanted to talk to a lawyer, a consumer lawyer, guess what? You have supporting document and showing the inconsistent information. So let me show you what I'm talking about first so we can go ahead and get into it. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, right to your report, you're going to see mostly all the negative accounts that is holding you back. So Let's just say this is, for example, um, Victoria's Secret. So if you have a Victoria's Secret or whatever type of negative account you have in your credit report, it doesn't matter. What you're going to see is the inconsistent information. And what you want to do is go to every single account. The account name is going to be right here. And what you want to do is go to every single negative account that's holding your credit score back. I don't care whether it's open or closed, but what we want to do is look at the collections, charge-offs, whatever that's holding you back, you want to go to that specific account. So what you're going to see is um, I'm going to go to the account name, but what you're going to see is the details that's within this specific account. So look at it. As you notice, that date open is inconsistent on from TransUnion compared to Experian, of course, and compared to Equifax. All right. But you also what you're going to see is a lot of other information, which is last reporting date is not the same as well. And as you can see right here, date last active isn't consistent. So Look at it from Experian, TransUnion, Equifax has three total different dates, right? Data last payment is, as you can see, is totally different as well. And most importantly, you can also see inconsistent information on this specific like payment history, right? So we have 30, okay, and have nothing. 180, okay, collection, okay. Like, so you see a lot of inconsistent information on a specific account. And if you go down to like, let's go down to another account, that's like holding this person back. So if we go right here, another collection. All right. So you see collection, collection, derogatory. So there is like specific ways you want to attack. But right now we're taking the first step. So I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of information. But what I want to do is just break it down to where you can understand what I'm talking about. So as you can see on this specific account right here, it is like inconsistent on a date open right here. Um, it's not showing the same. And you just want to look at it like go line item by line item and just look last reported is inconsistent and comments date last active is inconsistent like three different dates on this all right and we can go to another account and we can see the same thing over and over again all right and what you're going to do is see inconsistent information and you want to just look at it just go just just take your time and just look highlight print off the report um, if you don't, you want to go to a place and go print off your report and just, just take your time and just highlight the information that's reported inconsistent. Cause like I said, you're going to see this a lot, even with your open accounts, even with your good accounts, you're going to see the same exact thing. Um, inconsistent information. All right. So last reporting. Wow. Is reporting the same for the first time date last active different. So that's the information that you're going to see um, that's going to be inconsistent and you can use this as leverage to get it removed. And I'm going to basically walk you through that process. But what I want to show you is the inconsistent information on the report. Now that you looked at your report, you saw the inconsistent information. The next thing you want to do is um, look at your Experian report. All right. So you can go create a free account with Experian. And what you can do, what you're going to see is your personal information. Now, you're not going to see 
everything when you first log in. You got to act like you're about to dispute online because they're not going to show it right there on the home screen. So you want to go all the way down to the bottom. I wish I could show you, but of course, that's people's information. But when you go all the way down to the bottom of when you're in their specific account, you're going to be able to dispute online. All right. And what you're going to do is see personal information. Your personal information is going to be inconsistent. What I mean by that, you're going to have variations of your first name, variations of your middle name, variations of your last name. You're also going to have variations of your address. You're going to have variations of your phone number. You also might have a spouse on there. You might have a lot of things that's going to be inconsistent. So just look at it as if somebody, if you were to apply for a house or if you was to apply for a certain and somebody looked at that report, what they're going to say is, is this person uh, responsible? Is this person moved? Like you're going to see a lot of things. So you want to have one name, one phone number, one address, one job, job history, or you can have two addresses like where you're at right now and previous. All right. But if you want to remove it, you can just have one address, one phone number, one job history. All right. You just want to show something the same on Experian. TransUnion and Equifax. We don't want to have inconsistent information when it comes to our personal information, because like I said, when you're trying to buy a house or you're trying to get th things, they're going to probably, they could deny you based off of you don't look stable. All right. So what we want to do is create a letter. Once you see the variations of your first name, the variations of your um, last name, we want to create a letter. But most importantly, you want to check, like when you click on your personal information, you want to see what is attached to that negative account because you can also get that removed and make it harder for the credit bureaus to verify your information. All right. So we just making it harder for the credit bureaus to do their job. All right. But most importantly, they should, when they put that account on your credit report, they should already had everything complete and accurate. They should have had the open date, date left. Everything should have been already complete and accurate, but you already know they don't do their job. So what we want to do is create a letter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to, what this letter is going to look like. Here's a letter. Um, I'll have a letter for you, but it's really simple. Um, actually I'll have the document for you so you can just click on it and it pops you to this letter. So what you want to do is look at your personal information. All right. So when you have your personal information and you saw the uh, variations of your first name, variations of your middle name, variations in your last name, variations of your address, what you want to do is list all that information. All right. There should only be one address on your report and you want to put that address. All right. So you want to put your first name, last name, address, and list that one address. All right. But also what you want to do is tell them to remove the addresses. All right. So you want to list all the addresses that you want to get removed, right, right there. And then put all the pre all the previous addresses you want to get removed, put it right here. And also like all your, if you see the different variations of your first name, last name, middle name, you want to put all your names right here. I just did example one, two, three, but if you have, 10, 16, 20, you want to list all that information. All right. And then if you have multiple employers on your um, report, you want to list that to get it removed and just have one. And if you have a phone number, you can also put that as well. That's inconsistent. You can add that as well. And it's going to be really simple, but we're not going to send this letter out just yet because what you want to do is create a letter to set the credit bill, set the credit bureaus up to tell them to investigate the completeness and accuracy. And I'm going to show you how to create that letter as well but I want you to go ahead and create your personal information. Now, once you have your personal information letter, this should take you no more than 24 hours to create all this. And like I said, I'm walking through this, this step. If you didn't know the other credit bureaus, which is Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, be communicating with other people. So what you wanna do is order that report and see what's really going on on those other consumer reports. So. Here's the um, links. Like I said, I'm gonna have this document for you, but you can click on each link and there are so many other consumer reports out there, but you know, I just put some of the uh, main ones out there, but the first one is opt out pre-screen. All right. So what we want, the reason why we want to go to opt out pre-screen is because when we're fixing our credit, what I don't want to happen to you is for you to get tempted to actually apply for um, these credit card offers because some of these credit card offers are low limit credit cards, stuff that's not really good, high um, interest rate, high, um, don't give you a low amount credit limit. So what I don't want you to do is be applying for stuff when you're in the process of fixing your credit. So this place right here, if you ever got like something that's in the mail that's a, hey, you pre-qualify for this, it's because you was targeted 
um, based off of that specific company, they brought your information from the credit bureaus. They mailed you that letter saying that, hey, based off of the criteria that they found, the credit bureau sold your information to this company saying that, hey, send us the letter. And now they're trying to offer you and say that you pre-qualify for certain things. So what you want to do is opt out for right now. OK, we're going to opt out right now. And then after you opt out, you're not going to get you shouldn't receive no pre-approval offers. But of course, your, your information is, is all over the place. But right now, what you want to do is just click on this link and I'm going to basically walk you through the process. So here's the screen. Here's what it looks like. So opt out pre-screen is really simple. All you have to do is just scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click here to opt out, opt in. All right. So you can opt back in and you can opt out. But right now we just opting out for um, pre-approval offers. All right, so you can exclude your information. Just click on opt out by mail or electronic opt out for five years, or you can do permanent. We're not doing permanent. We just want to do this for the next five years, but it's not going to take five years to, for us to fix our credit. You, you can opt back in to get pre-approval offered, but right now what we want to do is just opt out. And all you got to do is just click on continue and just fill out your information and you'll be able to opt out for the next five years and then click submit and that's it. So we just opt out of, we just, so we just opt out of the pre-screen offers right now what you want to do is go to these other places and order your reports so all you got to do is just click on the links and just specifically go to them now what you're going to see is like Innovis is like we call it the baby credit bureau because they also report information so you want to order your report from there as well and all you got to do is just click it should be on a screen that looks similar to this but as you're on here go ahead and order your report fill out your information and it walks you through the process and you can go ahead and order your report. Now, what we want to do now is go to the next page, um, go to the next consumer reported agencies that basically have your information. LexisNexis is a really big one. They have a lot of information when it comes to um, your personal information. So you want to go ahead and do an online request. And sometimes they act crazy. So you can also click this link right here. Um, let me make it bigger. You can go ahead and click this link right here and um, do an online request. Or if they act crazy, you got to probably send them the mail because they always say that, hey, we need to verify your information. But go ahead and fill out your information um, to go ahead and get your report. Now, the next place you want to go to is ARS, um, another big place that has your information. All right. So sometimes these places act crazy. So what you want to do is either give them a call or send an email or whatever you want to do to go ahead and order your report. Um, ARS doesn't have like a online form, so you have to give them a call or send them an email so you can go ahead and order your report. All right. Now, once you're on there, you can also go to next. You want to go to check systems. The reason why you want to go to check system is because they also report information, not just bank information. You can also see, well, they mostly reporting bank information, but when it comes to like hard inquiries and other things they can they also have like inquiries on your report you can also get removed but you also want to check your banking report because if you apply for a bank account and you get denied is the reason why is because of check system early warnings and other places you can go to to order your report but you want to have your report as well to see the information about like the different banks that's reporting information on you and things like that so Go check your check system report and see what's being reported on you because everything is important when it comes to your information, but is credit is life. So go check your report and see what's re see what's being reported on you. Now that you ordered your check system to report, now what you want to do is go to Clarity Services. All right. Now Clar Clarity Services is um, I believe is with Experian. As part of Experian, like I said, if they're communicating with each other, guess what? You want to order that report. So go ahead and request um your clarity report you can just click on that link right there i'll make it a little bit bigger but go ahead and um, order your report and once you order your report it just walk you through the process of um actually how to order your report all right next place you want to order your report from is um data x all right so click on data x once you have it it's going to walk you through the process of ordering your report all right so all you got to do is just go down to the bottom and you know you can look through these different things but if these things apply to you but what you want to do is go ahead and order your report get form fill this out fill this form out and go ahead and send it whatever it tells you to do through the instructions on how to actually get your data x report like i said 
is owned by Equifax. So they reported information. So you want to go ahead and get that report. Like I said, everything is important when it comes to your consumer reports. So you just want to see the information that's being reported about you. And if you need to clean that up, you can go ahead and clean that up as well. The next place you want to go to is, is CoreLogic. Um, CoreLogic is more for, I think, a part from the top of my head, I believe it's apartment. So you want to order that report as well. Um, like I said, if you're trying to move into another apartment or another place, they also report information. Um, they have, I don't believe they changed, but if you want to see your apartment information or stuff like that, you can go ahead and um, order your report as well from here. So just go through the process, follow the instructions and go ahead and get your report from um, from CoreLogic. Instructions are right here to order your report. So all you got to do is just go ahead and, you know, read it. Let me see. Bigger. All you got to do is just go ahead, order your report, and it's right here. And it basically walks you through the process of how to order your report. Now, the next place we want to go to is... I have to go to CoreLogic. Now, there's more places, but I also want you... I also want you to order your driver's history, all right? Like I said, everything is important when it comes to your personal information. But as you can see, this place is linked with TransUnion. How convenient. So your credit, your consumer report is very, very important. And as you can see, your driver's history report is linked to um TransUnion. So like I said, they reported information. So they have a lot of information. So like I said, you want to clean all this up. So go ahead. Walk through the process. Um, it tells you how to order your driver's risk consumer report. Um, all your personal information is very important when it comes to cleaning up your credit. You have all your consumer reports. What we want to do now is actually create out letters to send to the credit bureaus, telling them to investigate. Now, I have the letter for you. It's really simple. All you have to do is just click on a link, click on it, and what's going to do is should pop up so i've been constantly updating this letter like when i first came out with a secret letter as you know people took the letter sent it to the credit bureau they didn't really change so i've been constantly updated and what i noticed was people said that their letter came back um the credit bureau say you sound like a credit repair company or is this really you and things like that so i've been adding things to it so as you can see um you're gonna have your first name name address date um, who you're sending this letter to, which credit bureau you want to send this to, to whom it's concerned. And I just recently, it's really simple, all right? I just recently looked at my report and I wanted to make sure everything is 100% correct and accurate. Can you reinvestigate the accounts listed below, all right? So what you're going to do is put the account name, account number, reinvestigate the completeness of every piece of information. And if it's not correct, please remove it from my credit report. All right. So we're giving them clear instructions of what to do. So you want to list all the negative accounts that's holding your credit score back. All right. So charge off bankruptcy, eviction, student loan, whatever's holding your credit score back. You want to list all those accounts because what you want to tell the credit bureaus to do is check the completeness and accuracy of this specific account. All right. We're doing this based off of the law. All right. This is the reason why I, where I got this from was based off the law, which was 15 USC 1681 I. And if you want to go ahead and read the law as well, I'll have the link for you to go ahead to read the law. But most importantly, we're just doing everything based off of the law. So after you do that, if you want to, it's up to you. You want to get it notarized. All right. So you want to go get it notarized. You can go to the bank. You can go to the post office. You can find different places to get it notarized. The reason why is because, like I said before, the credit bureaus were start this, or they still are saying that you sound like a credit repair company, all right? Or we can't verify your information. We don't know who you are. So to get it, once you get it notarized, they no longer can say that, hey, you sound like a credit repair company. Is this actually you? So this is the reason why you want to get it notarized, all right? If you don't want to get notarized, it's up to you. But when you have, when you send this letter out, you want to make sure you send this to, like I said, all three credit bureaus and make it different from every single credit bureau. So you don't want to have all the um, negative accounts. Like what I mean by that, if Experian is showing that you only have these many negative accounts, 
lists all the negative accounts on from experience credit report. TransUnion lists all the negative accounts. So you want to have, you're probably going to have three different letters. All right. So list all the negative accounts that, that you're talking to when it comes to Experian. List all the negative accounts when it comes to TransUnion. List all the negative accounts when it comes to Equifax. All right. Just forget to send it certified to the credit bills. All right. So when you go to the post office, make sure you send it certified. It's going to cost a little extra money, but make sure you send it certified because you want to make sure the credit bureaus receive the letters because what if you went to court they can say that they never received the letters so you want to have evidence that they received it so you can get it certified you can do um, return receipt when you go to the post office they're going to know what you're talking about or you can just do regular tracking and they're going to be able, you're going to be able to see that they received the letter all right now after you do that process you want to also um in the meantime of course remove hard inquiries all right so how can you remove your hard inquiries from your report you just call the credit bureaus because the credit bureaus have specific um information on their reports all right so what you want to do is call them and order that consumer report um once you call experience transunion and equifax once you get your report what you want to do is go down to the hard inquiry section what you're going to see is some um inquiries have permissible purpose some don't all right and this is all based off of 15 usc 1681b all right so some inquiries have permissible purpose some don't if they don't guess what you can get them removed also you don't want to dispute inquiries that are linked to your actual um credit card accounts all right so revolving accounts so those are credit card charge cards you don't want to dispute any inquiries based off of i mean you don't want to dispute the inquiries that are linked to those accounts so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to create a letter on how to do this. All right. So once you have your report, you want to go ahead and create a letter based off of uh, 15 USC 1681B. All right. So this is what it should look like. Like I said, I got you. Basically, walk you step by step. So first name, last name, address, current date, to whom it concerns. All right. So you want to go ahead and get the information. So I just got my report and notice some hard inquiries don't have permissible purpose according to 15 USC 1681B. I'll have the law for you as well. Can you please investigate these hard inquiries below and then go ahead and list the hard inquiries and name of the hard inquiry and a date, delete this hard inquiry due to violation of 15 USC 1681B and list all the hard inquiries. Make sure you send this, make sure you send this letter only to Experian. Make sure you send your letter only to TransUnion. Make sure you list all the hard inquiries only to Equifax, all right? We don't want to be mixing it up. Like I said, just make sure you send three separate letters. Make sure you send it certified. Very important to send it certified. Like I said, make sure the credit bureaus receive this letter because like you, like I always say, they always play crazy. So make sure they received it. Um, send this letter. Make sure you add two forms of identifications, um, driver's license and proof of where you've been, where you live at. All right. Now that you send your letter off to the credit bureaus, here's what you want to do next. You want to wait 35 days. All right. Now this is based off of 18 USC 1681I. All right. The reason why you want to wait, we got to wait 30 days for them to do an investigation and additional five days for them to mail you their investigation. All right. Now, once you have your investigation, I'll have another video for you to watch. But in the meantime, as you're waiting these 35 days, you want to be doing some things. All right. So you want to be checking your open accounts, looking at your payment history, checking your utilization look at to make sure some things are reported correctly the reason why is because if your payment history is not reported correctly not saying that you're late but if you're missing a 30-day um or if they're not reporting an on-time payment guess what that's costing you some port points if your utilization is off that is costing you some points everything is based off of the fico score all right so as you understand payment history is 35 percent of your score and utilization open you know all that stuff is 30 percent of your score Right there, that is 65% of your score. So if those two things are incorrect, guess what? You're missing out on some points. That's the reason why you want to be checking. So make sure you go back to your report and look over the payment history. Look over the utilization. Make sure the payments are correctly. Make sure everything is correct when it comes to this. All right. Now, if you don't have no accounts, let's just say, like if you don't have no um, open accounts and all your accounts are negative, you want to start 
add in some positive accounts to your credit report. Now I have a list of places you can go to to start adding some positive accounts on your credit report. Um, Rent Reporters, Rent, Rental Karma, Tomo Credit Boost, Self, Boom Pay. There's like different places you can go to. You can also, like I said, go to a local credit union, build a relationship with them. Um, just Google it and make sure, you know, walk in there, talk to them, communicate with them, ask them about their um, their credit builder program. So I'm pretty sure they should have some. And it should be a no credit check to get a secured loan or whatever else they have. It should be no credit check. Just double check and make sure. And once you have that, you can also get a secured credit card. But like I said, you just want to start building a relationship with the credit union because by the time you fix up your credit and do the things that's required, because we reap, you know, we reap what we sow. When you have like one credit bureau that's cleaned up or another one, you can still get funding based off of just going to a credit bureau that only pulls from TransUnion. I think they only use TransUnion to um, look at your report. All right. So you want to make sure you're all clean up and you build up your pro your profile to where um, people, the banks will actually approve you. All right. So quick reminders, just make sure not create account with CFPB, but you want to make sure you stay organized. All right. And also set up auto pay to make sure you don't miss uh, any late payments or any payments. All right.